War is mankind's worst creation, but more shockingly, it is the civilians who suffer the most. As an army rolls through a country, pillaging villages and towns, killing innocent people, destroying lives, but for what? For territorial gain, to enforce their ideology or religion on the populace. But what is the cost of it all? The deaths, the devastation and destruction. Is it really worth it? In World War I, 11 million military personnel were killed and 7 million civilians were also killed. After the war, there were food shortages across Europe as countries were still dealing with the aftermath of World War I. After the Germans had invaded Belgium and pushed into northern France, they got bogged down and there was a kind of stalemate between the two sides. Trenches were dug by both sides to protect themselves from enemy machine guns. This picture shows a basic layout of a trench. These trench systems stretched from the English Channel to Switzerland. The land in between the trenches was known as no man's land, which was a few hundred metres of churned up ground between the sides. Most of the time, rain and the exploding shells turned ground in and around the trenches into a huge ocean of mud. Disease was rife in the trench. Trench foot was one of them, which makes your feet go numb and can, if left untreated, lead to gangrene. Rats and lice were also in the trenches. It made life for the soldiers very unpleasant and risky due to the unsanitary conditions. Here is a map I drew, which shows areas that will have a referendum on whether to stay in Germany or Austria-Hungary, or whether to leave and join an existing nation, or form their own nation. The purple area will have a referendum on whether to join Belgium or to stay as part of Germany. The light purple area, which is Alsace-Lorraine, will have a referendum on whether to join France or stay as part of Germany. The brown area will vote on whether to stay as part of Germany or to become part of Denmark. The yellow section is land that will have a referendum on whether to join Poland or not. There are numbers so that it splits up sections so that Germany won't be able to go to war with Poland because it has people in it that want to be part of Germany, but part of Poland. The numbers will work like this. One will have a referendum. If it decides to stay and not become part of Poland, it will form its own nation. If two votes to stay, then three won't have a referendum. But if it votes to become part of Poland, three will have a referendum. If four decided to remain part of Austria-Hungary, it will become independent. One more thing. If one wished to stay as part of Germany, and two also wished to stay as part of Germany, it would also stay as part of Germany and not become independent. If all territories wished to leave the Austro-Hungaria Empire except the Green, then Austria and Hungary will have a referendum on whether to remain united or de-unite. If one nation wishes to leave, then the other will be forced to leave also. Green will have a referendum on whether to join Italy or not. The blue will have to become part of Lithuania. The turquoise, the pink and the light blue will become independent nations if they vote to leave. And the light blue may split down into smaller nations if its people wish to do so. And the pink and turquoise may unite if they also wish to do so. Finally, the red will have a vote on whether to join Romania. The Allies will also be involved in the peace deal. Their colonies will have a referendum on whether to become independent or not. This will also happen for Germany as well. To stop wars in Europe, an alliance will be formed called the European Alliance. Britain, France, Germany and austria hungary as well as a few of its territories, will be forced to join if any country attacks another country in Europe. All members of the alliance will go to war against the attacker, even if the attacker is part of the alliance because they have broken one of the rules, which is not to declare war on another country. Let's take this situation as an example. The USSR is attacking Poland. This is what will happen. Poland will join the European alliance and all member countries will go to war with the USSR as it is the attacker against Poland. Now let's look at this situation where Germany attacks Poland. This is what happens. Germany is then kicked out of the alliance and Poland joins. Then all members of the alliance go to war against Germany as it is the attacker and has broken one of the alliance's rules which is don't go to war against another country. All countries will have to pay reparations that were involved with World War I. They will not be expected to pay reparations directly after World War I. They will be expected to pay after they've made their economies more stable after the war. The new nations will not be expected to pay any but will likely receive some. 